Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to A Grim Dawn. We are playing with a hardcore drink essence death knight. And last episode we defeated the boss of the Ash of Melmoth expansion. In between episodes I did some reputation farming. I now have the Melmoth resistance to honored status. And that gives a couple of nice, uh, nice, nice, nice things. So we have, of course, I'll give you access to the next tab here in the quartermaster swing. So uh, there's the potential for the level 65 augments to be used. They're eight levels ahead of me, so for now they're not all that relevant yet. Though it is nice now to stock up a little bit. So uh, once you start playing elite and you won't have access to this vendor for a while, you'll just have them. Now that that's what I've been doing over time. Now I've got access to the uh, the Black Legion and to Homestead. I went through and I got the relevant uh, augments and I just stocked up ten of each. Right now my my weapon. And my shield have one applied. Once I unlock the rovers, I also get stuff for the for the jewelry. And here, it looks like it's mostly weapons as well. Oh, actually, uh, range and amulets as well. So a bit of a mix. This higher level, so they're probably going to be a little bit more powerful. But for now, I'm not that level, so I'm not even going to bother. What I am looking for, and what I've been looking for forward to actually for a long time, is the Mortality Relic. It requires on the status, but the thing itself is a level 35 one. So if I, oh, if this would have been my second character, I probably would have already unlocked it and I would have crafted it at 35. Mortality is a second tier um, relic, so transcendent relic. It requires a couple of other relics in order to make it. One Corruption, one Hysteria and uh, the Gluttony I'm currently using. It all takes those, you add two uh, Tainted Brain Matters. Uh, purified Salt and Imbued Silvers are you know, pretty low tier crafting materials as well. Haunted Steel is a uh, higher tier crafting material, it's not the, the, the shiny yellow versions. It you not know, takes quite some materials and you know, some, some specific uh, farming for Ether Crystals because of course all the components that you uh, end up farming require ether crystals. But I did all the preparation works. All I needed is the, the blueprint. So no, this is going to get us plus one to uh, necro skills. So it's going to boost all of our skills. It's going to give a bit of a bonus to uh, vitality and ether damage. Some offensive ability. So hitting and critting is going to be a little easier. And if we had pets, they would have some more bonus. And then we have a 15% chance on attack to get a buff called mortality which grants flat ether damage so that is all weapon attacks will use that and on top of that we get another 50% bonus to our vitality and ether damage and if we had pets they would become stronger and we get a random completion bonus so i'm gonna grab the blueprint it's relatively cheap use. so we're gonna learn that one 17,000. And then we're gonna have a look here. Um, I need to take my gluttony off because then it can actually be used as an ingredient. So the the haunted steel I was talking about. Uh, notice the uh, the one that takes the most effort. You oh you need um, tonic seals of binding. You need vengeful wraiths and you need uh, polished emeralds and then you need to make four bits out of it. And the uh, vengeful wraiths they used to be a pain to craft. Now they're a little easier, especially because you can actually make ectoplasm before you had to farm ghosts and well, you need to kill a lot of ghosts to get it. But no, this is where the ether crystals go. So in the end you burn through quite some crystals, but I, I already did all the prep work in between episodes. So mortality is all that I need. Also need 37 and a half thousand bits of iron. And then it's gonna get us a mortality with a random bonus. So let's create it and let's see. Vitality damage, ether damage, vitality decay, offensive ability, plus one to all necro. And the completion bonus is plus one to bone harvest. That's a skill I don't use. So if I were to craft it again, I would get a, another random skill bonus. That could be relevant. So, but plus one to do. Uh, well, anything really that we use on the uh, necromancer side. So, drain essence would obviously be good. Uh, spectral binding, spectral wraith are obviously pretty nice ones. 
Uh, Harbinger of Souls, no, it's a global damage bonus, that's not too bad. Reap Spirits is a one point, so it will be a little bit wasted to get specific plus ones in it. Uh, that could go in other places. Eventually I want to max out Siphon Souls, so the range will get increased, so that's going to be useful. And I think that that's it. Snow, for the rest it's, it's not too bad. So we got plus one to all skills. Um, that means Hungering Reach and Decomposition just went one tier requirement up. What I'm actually going to do is uh, downgrade those and then reinvest the other points. Well, simply because they will end up using more energy. So I we have a Spirit Guide over here. So take you both down to tier 6. And then I have 2 Farewell. points to spend. So no, my Drain Essence damage went up to 2200. So no side effect of the uh, main skill getting a plus 1. The uh, Harbinger of Souls getting a plus 1. The uh, life bonus from Spectral Binding, the damage, retaliation, and such from a Spectral Wraith. There's all just a lot of good stuff. Uh, without really putting in too much effort, Siphon Souls is also at level 6, including its bonus. Part of it, of course, is we have Legendary Pants that give it a bit of a boost, but uh, the radius is getting larger and larger. My current quest is to get to the final tier of Soldier that I want, so I'm just going to invest those points. And now it's only 4 levels away from me. Um, let's see. So we now have a relic. Uh, it ended up being cheaper than I expected it to be. So let's just uh, hover up some of the other blueprints. See anything you like? So Vendetta is the uh, Inquisitor one. I'll give you a good price. And on then we I have like. the Melmoth Bladed Girdle and the Melmoth Arcane Girdle. Both are level 90. So for now I'm gonna skip them because they're 44,000 each. And I think I can better spend my monies. See you around. We also got access to another quest here. And that's why Corinia is uh, eager to talk to me. Well, if it isn't my favorite human. Listen up. The time has come to start cutting off the heads of the ethereal occupation. So, ooh, heads needs cutting. That's going to be the back city council. The city so, oh, uh, well, misclicked. Back before the city fell. So, I uh, will deal with the council. And I already did a little bit of scouting. A little bit, a little bit of scouting. Because, well, I've been uh, clearing out Crown Hill here for a bit. And this door, normally it's closed once you get to uh, on status and you pick up the quest. This door opens and now we can go hunting for the council. One thing of note, I went from, mortality, from um, gluttony to mortality. Gluttony has a small bonus to your ether resistance. Mortality does not. So I'm down to 49 ether resist. So for here, I will actually drink one of my spirit pain potions to get my ether resistances up to a decent level. No, just uh, keep that in mind. There's a little bit of a trade-off here. And then we continue the, uh, the murdering. The council was somewhere to the, to the top end, if I remember correctly. So what we'll do is to we'll, we'll go this way, I'll do a full clear of the area. We'll get more reputation, get more loot, get all the good stuff in life. So some other things I, I did, I actually took care of most of the uh, side quests. I still have the uh, Ancient Grove dungeon quest thing. Um, as I said, not really that interested in the uh, challenge dungeons, though I did... did uh, have a look at a, a video by Monica Mike who did a, a run of the uh, new dungeon in a multiplayer session and it looked like they, they had a pretty darn powerful party going on because they kind of waltzed over all the boss fights but it looked like the dungeon was less dangerous and less intense than Port Felbury which is the one that got added uh, before that um, I've never actually done Port Fulbury for a um, for a video. I've, I've just done it once uh, in multiplayer with a friend. And boy, that was an intense dungeon. <laughs> uh, I managed to get through without dying. But then again, I do tend to build rather tanky characters now, as is my, as is my thing. Uh, I build a tank out of everything, including glass cannons. He was more of a glass cannon, so he ended up dying a bit, a couple times. 
But poor Fulbury is, is, is more dangerous. Interesting, but more dangerous. Definitely nobody the entrance uh, boss there already. No signals. You will want to have some damage here. And it, that place is just so flooded with arcane. Well, we know, but not with arcane, but with uh, ethereal damage. It's just not funny anymore. So unless you have 80 ether resist, you just don't want to go in there. Let's see. There we go. Okay, I think that's the next stage, so let's backtrack a little bit and do some more murderizing. Oh, hello there, hero. That skill's not ready. I don't think you're dead enough. So the... So the range on the uh, Siphon Souls is slowly getting larger. Oh, it's, still, it's still not significant, but... Uh, it, it will become relevant over time. Especially once I'm done no, bumping up the, uh, the, the the soldier mastery bar. Then of course there's going to be more damage. And then now I can just oh, start focusing on, on the active skills that we all have. Oh hello. You are voracious. And the ethereal guards now hate me. So that means more hero spawns if I remember correctly. Is that correctly? Yeah, more hero spawns. I like hero spawns. Um, and we were... Actually, we were not really focusing on getting any specific kind of reputation. So that's quite alright. Okay, let's go into the console. Draven Cole. American Auburn Ring. Yep. So, uh, let's actually just rip someone's spirit out, just because I can. Uh, do some, some, some damage reflection focusing. A little bit of overguarding since they are pushing out quite some damage here. <laughs> and then usually once one goes, then the other ones yeah. soon follow it's after. Okay, they're doing decent damage. It's the uh, crystals near you. They yeah. do good damage, it looks like. Is that a treasure room? It's not a treasure room, it's just a room. It's the council, you're, no, you're, they're expected to have treasure. Oh, hello there. Lots of shard things. They look neat though, with the uh, shards floating around. Supreme chest, yeah, see that's what I'm talking about. Those are the proper treasuries. Supreme chest of lots of lootiness. Is there another room here? It's a little creepy. Anything else? Oh, hey, crumbling wall. Aha, you look like a secret. Ew. This. Oh, there's loot, so I'm not, not complaining too much. I just have to uh, clean it a little bit, so polish it, get some of the goo off, and then oh, it's a perfectly fine treasure. And another small treasure box here. And that wraps up the council fight. A relatively, relatively quick fight. Relatively easy. Okay, and of course, now we went into the uh, council building. So we probably end up oh, outside of the council building on the, on the other side. Oops. Oh, nicely interconnected. I can go back and hand in the questie. Have the councilmen been vanquished? Yes, they are nowhere. Okay, and that's it. A thousand reputation, and I get an empowered warmaster's pride. A ring that gives me plus one to all soldier skills. Ooh, that is. Oh, it's not even a ring. It's an amulet. Oh, that's that's less interesting. So, plus one to all soldier skills, that's obviously good. Plus two to shattering blast and demolitionist. Oh wow, this is my commander would have loved this one. 
plus one to both the classes that the commando uses. That's relevant. Um, Battle cry, 20% chance on block. Which gives you 18 seconds duration, 100 damage, 10% speed. This is this is pretty nice. It's not for me. I, I like the death ward too much and no the uh, the defy death 25% uh, lifesaver trigger. It's just too good on the hardcore not to use it. But so this one definitely goes into the uh, strong box for uh, safekeeping. Let's see. Ooh, got another blue one. Signet of the Astral Ruminations. Fist, Lightning. Uh, Pierce Resist, Elemental Resist. It's alright. Relevant resistances. Now it's four resists that will get penalized in Epic Difficulty. Of Elite Difficulty. So that's gonna be alright. I'll keep your stash safe. So. Well, this one we can just put in the box, because that's a keeper. This one actually looks pretty relevant, so might as well keep it. And then... Put all the currency things in here, or the components. So, what I've got lined up for level 65 is... Oh, well, at least want to try it out. It's the Empowered Doom Soul of Gluttony. Uh, plus two to Rain Essence, so that is relevant. Uh, Small bonus to vitality damage, uh, irrelevant bonuses to physical damage. But it also has a 10% chance on attack to cast a life stealer Nova. 6 meter radius, 2100 vitality damage, all of it leached, and it triggers every 3 seconds. So with mortality replacing um, gluttony, the, the previous one, gluttony had a proc that was a... Uh, a wave, a life-stealing wave attack. So obviously I'm, I'm missing one of my life recovery tools here. I'm boosting all of my skills, so there's some value in that, but no, there's one specific proc that's no longer there. So I figured maybe if, I, if I'm missing it, switching to Life Stealer Nova instead of the, the Death Omen might be irrelevant here. But no, we'll, uh, we'll see about that. Um, it's safe with me, promise. See that? Kind of ends what I wanted to do here. Obviously, there is the uh, the rovers. The rovers. I need twenty nine hundred more reputation to get access to the uh, next quest, which will unlock this desecrated shrine. Other than that, I believe I have actually unlocked every single shrine that is in the uh, base game and the expansion. So we can move on to Elite Difficulty. So actually, let's get started on it. So we uh, change the difficulty to Elite. And we'll get going. So hello Still there, Jarvis. He's, um... I'll be on my way then. So on Elite, all of our... Top row resistances are penalized by 25%. So I was massively overcapped on fire, now I'm only a little overcapped. Uh, cold and lightning, I was overcapped by quite a bit. Now I'm nearly capped. Uh, poison, I'm missing 20 points. And PS, I'm twin missing 20 points. Bottom row, still in the shape it was. So short term, I'd like to get another 30 points of ether resistance, 20 poison, 20 pierce. And everything is going to be hunky dory. So, no, that, that's going to be for the, the, no, the short to medium term. As I kill all kinds of mobs, I will unlock um, honored status with different uh, factions. So, the one uh, I've mentioned before, the rovers, is one I want. Once I hit level 65, I can actually also go back to, to veteran mode and have a chat with the Melmoth folks to see what they have to offer to put on my uh, jewelry. Because um, now if you get you some, some, some augments to it. fix your resists, then you're going to be in pretty good shape. We already have enough reputation to actually go into town, so that's alright. Now instantly gain access to um, all the stuff and that was there. Monsters here. They should be leveling along with you for quite a bit. 
the level range of elite is a, more, a bit more flexible than it was on uh, on veteran slash normal. So now we can just uh, go through here without doing too much. Well, let's see. But I'm just gonna take out the uh, the necromancer. The uh, houses. There's a couple of houses here that have some uh, some 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 objects that always drop. There's uh, like a, an, an, a gun with with ice uh, damage, I think, and like a two-handed sword with lightning, and I think fires a fire one-handed weapon or something. But at least there's one for for an all three elemental types, and there's three different weapon types. Uh, I think there's higher level versions of those uh, around here. But I always forget specifically in which house they uh, they are hiding. But I know they are around here. What I'm looking for is the uh, the tree with the uh, with the zombie, the the, the, the unique zombie sp uh, that's kind of spawn. So all of these are either corruptions rather than ah oh, yes, it's just hello, Barog the bloody. I'm gonna rip your spirit out. Stuffing personal. It's just that, well, you're, you're a hero, I'm a hero. No, well, let's play a game of Highlander. Only one of us will walk away alive. Yes, like that. And gone it is. So, this bridge has been collapsed. Hey, says the Arcanists. I don't remember Arcanists in town. Then again, it's, it's just the one. So on the lead, we get access to new devotion shrines. Not all of the uh, old ones are gonna be here. No, some of them will be, some of them won't be. Hey, there's someone in the house. Hello there, Faldis. Come down. Uh, way's clear. I can open the river gate. I uh, will take you home. Boop, come. And we just added Faldis to them. And we got some reputation for that. Rift Scourge, Insectoid Rift Spawns. And then we have a waypoint up there. No, that one actually died from the smash. Some cold ones. I I don't like the uh, the the thing about uh, the thing. I like most about Grim Dawn is just all the procs that you can have on your character. All the uh, the effects that just trigger whenever things attack you, whenever you block something. You know, just seeing you no know, like the purple skull over their head or you no know, the uh, ethereal wrath uh, backlash. All those things, they're they're nice. It really makes it, yeah, it makes Grim Dawn Grim Dawn. You know, those effects. Because that, that's one of the most distinguishing features it has compared to the uh, to, to the other big games in the in the genre right now. I mean, Path of Exile doesn't really have procs. There's, there's some trigger gems, as the the, the um, but cast from damage taken. Now there there's some some things you can configure, but they're not specific unique procs. They're just you no know, the normal skills that you attach to proc like effects, and they're sort of kind of. Survivability slash niche thing. Whereas in Grim Dawn, there's just so many of them that it's no really a, a, a core thing, and every build is gonna have a bunch of them. And of course, now there's the now the the, uh, the offensive box now on attack, defensive one on block, on damage taken, or just no on getting hit. I like it, especially you now once you get enough of those things going. No, there's if you take a lot of defensive ones, there's quite a lot of sustainability in just getting your your procs do their thing. There is a ruined shrine down there. That's another devotion point. I only need a couple more points to max out. Lovely little Ratesh Ratosh. That skill's not ready. As I rip your spirit out, reflect all the damage to you, and then you can just throw at me whatever you want.
No, as an ethereal, this one is of course resistant to ether damage. So the uh, total damage is not not a little slower. It's one of the reasons why I always beeline for Ratosh with most of my vitality slash ether damage over with most of my necromancers. Because Ratosh is just such a good constellation for reducing enemy resistances. And for a, a life game build, of course, it uh, or a life steel build. Life leech build, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the reduction to enemy life resistance should be pretty helpful. So, three crystals makes one devotion point. So, the devotions. Let me go down there. And then, Ratosh the Veil Warden. Ooh, we get Pierce and Bleed Resistance. And some health. Wonderful. So, Pierce is nearly maxed out. That is always nice. And, oh, uh, while I'm here, might as well just no, show you again. The Will of Ratosh uh, proc is the reason I'm gonna go for it. 15% chance on attack, no cooldown. 4 second duration, inflict a vitality and ether damage. Reduce enemy vitality resistance and reduce enemy life leech resistance. Makes all my life leech effects much more potent against enemies that have life leech resistance. Such as most bosses. And 15% chance on attack on a um, drain essence that attacks more than 3 times per second. Well, it's gonna trigger a lot and it's gonna trigger relatively reliably. So and there's only upsides to that one. So we cleared out the very first quest. Oh, it's a bit of a right fast. It's now always just doing that one. But that's for new characters usually it takes an entire episode because you'll start with zero gear and it's just gonna be you know, slow going. For Elite, now you see we are more established, we actually have relatively decent gear, they're relatively powerful and we can just no, speed clear quite a bit of it. Oh, did I spot a box? Well, Cocoon remains, that's kind of like a box. So we're gonna come out here, let's just take a right turn past these angry fox. Because if I remember correctly, then Pharaoh's the Rotted is somewhere near. And I always end up missing him if I don't go that in. Skill's not ready. Because then I stick to the roads and then I miss murdering the guy. Hey, hello there. There's a, there's a battle going on here. Pharaoh's is on my quest hit list. This other thing is, is not. It's uh, something different. Also, there's poison damage here. I'm less resistant to poison damage right now. So let's take this outside. Yeah, so that is one down. Then, oh, let's not ignore Pharaohs. You also need to die. Thank you very much. Let's just step out of the, of the circle. And then everything's gone. Cool. Okay, while I'm out here, I might as well just run through and get to the next weapon. So one of the nice things is by this point now you have all the factions unlocked so all the kills you make actually contribute to gaining faction reputation which is rather lovely. Ooh, cave entrance. Lots of poison here, be careful. Poison resistance is not maxed. Though then again, usually it's not normal either. Yeah, this go definitely goes much more efficient than it was before. But also, in nice detail is of course my energy is still stable. I only got a plus one to my um, terrain essence skill, so it's not that big of a difference. But still, that one level it could have mattered. But right now, my my energy regen is is solid enough. That I'm not draining myself relatively quickly. And for some of the, you know, the, the more prolonged fights, that is of course going to be relevant. 
But it's only a, a big problem if you train yourself fast enough that you can't compensate by drinking energy flasks or potions. Now, if that's the speed at which you burn through your energy, then you'll have a bit of a problem. Otherwise, you're gonna be fine. Oh yeah, we uh, got the whole Naga Shaman necklace capturing thing again. As I said, one necklace, two necklaces. Uh, turtle shells now rank 17. No, the, the damage shield on that one just keeps getting better, which is good. Because enemies are gonna do more damage as well, so it needs to keep up. Okay. Might as well take out some more of these folks. I think we will have enough reputation this playthrough or this uh, difficulty to get the Naga questline, the origin of the Slif. So we'll be doing that one as well once it uh, pops up. But I think we do need to you know, clear out some of the other quests first. You know, the, 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 the sewers in the Naga and things like that. And you know, find the uh, inventor's aid and things like that. And after that, we should get that quest offered. So we are honored with Homestead, aren't we? Let's just double check. Or not Homestead, uh, Devil's Crossing. Oh no, we're only respected. Ah yes. You only get reputation for killing Cronley's gang. That's the uh, big, big, big downside of uh, that faction. Cronley's gang only lives in a very, very small place. So it's difficult to really get reputation with them outside of... No, that, that one really specific bit of the... Uh, of the story playthrough. Also, wasn't Milton Hart here, or is that gonna be on the next island? So, okay. I'm just just casually doing quite some of the uh, of the content already, but I'm having fun. So it's a little bit more extended than I intended the episode to be, but I don't think anyone is gonna mind. Okay, 58, that is a tier, next tier for a lot of um, uh, augmented elites. They, uh, 58 is one of those those tiers where uh, a lot of uh, elites have that as a requirement. Oh, hello there. I don't think you're dead enough. Also... Looks like I'm actually backtracking rather than, than forward tracking. Sometimes I have things differently in my head than they really are. Okay, next level is gonna be where we grab the final tier. Get access to Counter Strike. Which I, I think I'll just keep as a one pointer, but it's gonna be a helpful one pointer nonetheless. It, it's just no, whenever things attack me, there's a chance for it to proc and do AOE damage around me. So if I'm getting mopped, it's yet another thing that's just gonna help clear enemies away from me. Ah, yes. Have to take care of this. Next wave. So I'll just rip the spirit out of one of those just to get some um, assistance from my lovely little wraith. Okay, they are capable of doing decent damage. Let's overguard against it. Okay, one down. Then the other one. I'm standing in the middle of, of some ether fire. Might not be the best idea in the world. No, given that my ether resist is about 49% right now. But other than that, I'm doing fine. I mean, this is a well, no, it, it's a big brute. It, it hits pretty hard. No, 20% or so of my uh, 10 to 20% of my health, depending on, on how it rolls. But it's very slow going. So if you have enough sustain, uh, you'll just get it back. That's no problem. Okay, so then Milton is gonna be over here. No, I, I'm, I'm completely messing this up. I think. 
Or am I just confusing them? Oh, see, there's Jillius and a cave. Come on, Jillius. Uh, well, I've said it before and I'll probably say it again. The, the swamp, it always confuses the heck out of me. I always confuse them. I just don't have a, a mind for remembering which tree uh, goes where. Okay, there is a house here. But this is... Oh, this is yeah, just a house. Because I think Milton has a couple places where he could spawn, but most often I think it's here. Milton Hart, yep. And then Negan is going to be to the right of the next white point. Let's actually get you out so we can see who we're fighting. Oh, come on. Yes, like that. Don't be shy. And there you go. Okay, I've talked myself into going to get another one just to wrap up the uh, Negan the Withered one. It's kind of easy to talk myself into doing more. As I said, now this this early bit. So if we just now finish up the swamp, that's uh, that's nice. Then next episode we can just uh, move on with the questies in town and then go over the Burbage. So the the Sodden Hollow always has Negan right over here. And now we're getting slowly to the part where I'm actually slowly starting to recognize things again. So you're burning things around you, which is no not good for your health if you're tanking immediately, but um. Tanking him from a slight distance, so it's alright. Not a crystal. Not nope. Rule one of Grim Dawn: if you see a crystal, kill the crystal, because you never ever have enough crystals. And I think this is going to be a good point to go back to to town. Well, we grabbed a couple of waypoints. We did a couple of side quests. That so dead attacks of a creature. Is I need gone. some time to plan our strategy. Uh, In the I will speak with the people, sis. Then Harmon is happy. I felt vindicated. Wonderful. Get some uh, some scrap. Get some reputation. Ponymous. Welcome to my workshop. You Rift want to speak with me? Wait, what? You can experiment on me like with crystals. Excellent. I feel Very stronger. And that's it. And I'll look for your apprentice. Okay, so we gain one whole skill point from this, which is enough actually to max out the mastery bar. Well, it's not quite maxed, so we can go to the last tier. The reason I'm not going to go to 50 is it's 10 points and these are both exclusive skills. We have Oliran's Rage which boosts your physical damage. I don't do physical damage so I don't care. And we have Menhir's Bulwark which is very defensive. No, the damage absorption is pretty solid. It gives you some physical damage, it gives you some health regeneration. Actually it's pretty efficient in terms of health regeneration. Boosts your retaliation damage but it conflicts with Harbinger of Souls. Since Harbinger of Souls boosts all of my damage and it gives me some health, uh, some, some lifesteal, some, some, some conversion and all that stuff. This synergizes inc so incredibly much with the build that it feels silly slash foolish to go with Manage Bulwark. So I'm just saving myself 10 mastery bar points by not going here and instead spending them on other places. I will of course be missing out on no 10 times the physique, cunning, spirit, health and energy bonuses but... That's, that's a good trade-off. It's a lot of builds actually. No, they just ma max out one mastery bar. And then for the second one, they either go to 32 or 40, depending on what they want slash need out of it. So here we're going to grab mor uh, Break Morale for one pointer. We're going to grab uh, Counter-Strike and we're going to grab uh, Scars of Battle. And then just let the, do the, you know, the plus ones and do the rest of it. Um, so Bonobus is now, we need to go to Burbage. Then over here. The cabin send you no, over. This is bottomless. You, must you want some scrap? Well, fix your mill. Is, I got the water pumping again. Get some iron. Since that's fine. Get to the cave. Though that's going to be below town. Then into in inside we can have a chat with Sybil. 
who of course wants us to find her brother. I found an amulet with your name. And we, no, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss, so to say. And we get a ring from you. Feldis, we rescued him earlier. So he's going to be happy and thankful. And we got some reputation and a little bit of a scrap. New difficulty, new chances. So Greetings, we can have child. a chat with Sadina. Who gives us a little bit of XP and now unlocks as the spirit guide. And over here we... Uh, Constance. What he needs, I will get you some fabric. And then we need to get three bits of fabric from the... Uh, the, the, the docks district what of Burbage. Which, of course, will the abandoned waterfront. We will get to there probably next episode, as I think we're just gonna uh, speed clear Act 1 pretty darn quickly. So, is there anything else we can do here? Um, yeah, so next episode, we're gonna go dive underneath the town, clear out the Naga. I don't think the Devotion Shrine is there. I'll actually uh, check. Uh, uh, check a guide to see on Elite where the Devotion Shrines are, so we can just now tactically go there and just grab the ones that I want, or the, the ones that are there. Um, near one of the waypoints in the swamp, to the left is a cave that has a Devotion Shrine on normal. I just have to see if it's also there on Elite. I know that the um, Underground Passage on normal, there's a shrine there, and there's also the find with the golem. On the lead, the shrine's not there, so that's usually no good reason to just fix the bridge and move on and even ignore the whole waypoint downstairs. Um, so no, from Foggy Bank, it's just fix the bridge, go to Burbage outskirts, grab the hammer. Um, I think the cave on the side here, I'm not entirely sure if the devotion shrine is still going to be there, yes or no. Burbage Village will have one, so... Even if no, none of these side areas here have a shrine, then at least Burwich Village is gonna be gonna have the uh, the desecrated shrine, and that's where we're gonna finish up Ratosh. But that's what I'm saying now from the top of my mind. Also, I actually did a, a very silly slash foolish thing. I went out without having all of my auras on, so I missed out on all my defensive life saving features. I also missed out on. What is it? 1600 health. I missed out on the Spectral Wraith. That of course makes fights much easier just by stripping away monster resistance. And all of the uh, procs like, for example, the, the Turtle Shell and, and the uh, Giant's Blood. So, that was risky. I survived. But I was also a bit underpowered here compared to what I could have been. So next episode, I'll make sure to actually have all the buffs up. And then we keep going. But for now though, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.